crossing over Joshua 3 verse 1. This is a prophetic word to the body of Christ. It's about where we are today and there is a crossing over of the Jordan into the promised land. We are at that place where many are are with Moses on the side and the edge of the Jordan and Moses dies and we see Billy Graham who has just uh, departed to be with the Lord and we see prophetically that the body of Christ is at this place at the edge of the Jordan crossing over and that is the prophetic word of the series crossing over crossing over the Jordan Acknowledgement, this presentation is made possible only through the prayers and financial support of the faithful friends and partners of the founder of Revival Central, Apostle Derek, www.revivalcentral.com. Please support this work and also to share this, this video with as many as you know as it is very important it shows the way of crossing over the Jordan and the revelation here is a treasure from the wilderness and it's unique who is this coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all the merchant's fragrant powders. Song of Solomon 3 verse 6 This speaks of Solomon when he comes forth with, with his bride. It speaks of, of marriage coming forth out of the wilderness. And it speaks of a oneness, a unity in Christ that it speaks of of a remnant of people who he has called into the wilderness for a long time and he's been with these people and he's bringing them out now to lead the new move of God and they come forth in a oneness in Christ and there's, a, there's an anointing, there's a presence of God as they come forth and this is the meaning of the scripture. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen this people I have formed for myself they shall declare my praise here we see what God has done in the wilderness he has provided water he has been with those in the wilderness and he's done a new thing in the wilderness. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree, the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the cypress tree and the pine and the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together 
that the hand of the Lord has done this, and the Holy One of Israel has created it. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would have satisfied you. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Just as it happened with Israel, so too it happens today. Many will stay on the side of, of the desert and will not cross over. Many people in the body of Christ will not heed this word. They will not heed the revelation of what's needed to cross over. And many will die in the wilderness. But with most of them God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples. Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. God called Moses to the backside of the desert. God kept John the Baptist in the wilderness. God revealed himself to Apostle Paul in the wilderness of Arabia. Likewise, God has revealed himself to those called into the wilderness in the last of the last days, and they have a revelation from God. The key to crossing over the apostolic foundation, the revelation from the wilderness. We will be looking at this in the next series, in depth. Why is the apostolic foundation so important? The apostolic foundation brings in reformation. The last revival comes on the wings of reformation. The apostolic foundation leads to reformation and reformation brings forth revival. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name? and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Watch therefore and pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Who brings in revival? Hidden apostles bring in the last revival with a revealed message. God has hidden his holy apostles and prophets for this present hour by Maurice Galar. The Billy Graham Prophecy Prophecy 1. There is a company of people that have been hidden in God for a season, but they are coming out of hiding. In a three minute video shown below, Mark Sharona delivered this prophecy in 2012 while appearing as a guest 
on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Mark Sharona is uniquely gifted to train, mobilize and ignite transformation in God's people. Here's a transcript from the video. That video is on YouTube. We are coming into perhaps the most significant day in church history. There are a number of things that are going to begin to converge. We talked about the book of Luke and the signs. There's going to be a convergence of the signs. With it, there's going to be an acceleration and they are all going to overlap. When that happens, there's a company of people that have been hidden in God for a season. But they are coming out of hiding and they are going to stand in the courts of Pharaoh like Moses did and Elijah did. They are going to challenge the spirits. They are going to challenge the powers of Egypt. The earth is going to see a 21st century manifestation of the demonstration of the spirit. Not from one or two but from a many membered body. God is going to have the church of his dreams. All of the institutionalizing that we've done to the church, all the things that we've done to try to make it our thing instead of God's thing. God has had the church under wraps for 2,000 years. Maybe that's why there are 2,000 cubits between where this generation is and the ark. Because God wants a church that has been hiding and prepared for power by severe testing, severe trials, severe tribulation every single season. And they feel like they're not going to be used and it is too late and it is all over. That is the company that is prepared for power. They have been like John the Baptist in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey, strange food. They have had to learn to glean from the word where they, when they were just getting a little pious platitudes from preachers all around the country. They are being weaned away from everything that is contradictory to the powerful truth of the word of God. That company is coming out of hiding. They are going to cross Jordan. They are going to move into a manifestation of power where there will not just be power on one or two, but there's going to be power on multiple, multiplied thousands and thousands. As soon as Mark Sharona finished delivering that word, evangelist Benny Hinn added this prophecy. The sign will be, Benny, be Billy Graham's death. You're talking about a people in hiding, just like Elijah was in hiding. But when he came out, he challenged the prophets of Baal. And the Lord said to me in 1989, when Oral Roberts and Billy Graham go home, it, it, it will be the key. It will be the sign of the beginning of the greatest revival. Oral is home and Billy is about to go home. And when he does, I, I'm telling you, the whole church get ready. Prophecy 2. Look to when I take my servant Billy Graham home. The age of grace will end soon after. T.D. Hale. Thus saith the Lord. The grace of peace is about to be removed from the nations. The grace of financial security and stability is about to be removed from the wealthy nations that have hoarded their money and resources from the poor of my people. I will remove the shields of protection and allow the enemies of the West to bring destruction through acts of terror. War is coming to Israel, the Middle East and to the West. Once the red horse of war is loosed, it will not cease on the earth for seven years until I return to set up my kingdom upon the earth. The time of tribulation is almost upon you, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Look to when I take my servant Billy Graham home. When I do, it shall be a prophetic sign that the age of grace will end soon after. Wake up and be ready for my appearing in this midnight hour, O backslidden church. I am coming for my bride who has made herself ready. Repent and prepare to meet thy God or be left behind to endure uh, my wrath upon the wicked of the earth who have hardened their hearts against me. O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Prophecy 3 God has hidden his holy apostles and prophets for this present hour.
a December 2011 prophecy by Maurice Collard. The Lord says, The American dollar is about to lose 30% more of its present value. This will be the second drop since the previous 2008 drop of 20%. The dollar will then be worth half of what it was before September 2008. This drop will cause great economic distress upon our nation. The church will be shaken and many will wake up spiritually and cry out to be. There will also be looting, rioting and terrorism in our land. There is an even greater financial disaster that is falling upon Europe that will collapse the euro, cause panic and chaos there. Germany will refuse to prop up the euro anymore. Basic needs in the poorer European nations will be threatened. Many will lose their money overnight as the stage is set for the financial takeover of the Antichrist system. This is imminent and the dollar will also follow, although it will survive for a season more. The great revival will also begin. God has hidden his holy apostles and prophets for this present hour. There will be great outpourings of supernatural provision, miracles and healings in various places. These areas will become cities of refuge and places of refuge for God's people. There is coming an all-out war in the Middle East as the neighboring Arab nations will come against Israel with a sudden missile attack starting from the north with Hezbollah, Lebanon and Syria. Other Arab nations will join. Israel will be hit from all sides at once and there will be deaths and partial destruction of settlements, smaller cities to the north and some damage to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem as well. Israel will respond with great force and a limited nuclear weapons will release devastation upon the neighboring countries, particularly Lebanon, Damascus, which will be destroyed completely and the rest of Syria as well as military strikes into Iran, Gaza and even northern Egypt, Sinai region. The resulting shaking of the West will then release a tremendous movement of Jews back to Israel. There will no longer be security or stability as there has been up to now in America and Europe. Israel will emerge victorious from this war but hurt. However, the devastation inflicted upon the attackers will be 100 times worse. The spoils of this war will include much territory and will force the West to recognize the Holy God of Israel. It will emerge as the only stable country in the region. Many, even millions of Arabs will be killed. Islam will receive a mortal wounding by the Holy God of Israel. I am taking Billy Graham home to heaven soon. When you see this, know that my time of grace for the gentle nations is coming to a close. Prepare your hearts. The Lord is at the door to appear for his bride, the overcoming church in this midnight hour. Pray for those that are trapped in darkness that God will reach them in time. In our Messiah, Maurice Scalar. Question 1. Why does God bypass the church leaders today and rather raise up a remnant outside the establishment in the wilderness to lead the final worldwide revival before the coming of the Lord? Question 2. Will the church leaders of today receive and welcome the remnant outside the establishment in the wilderness that God has raised up to lead the final worldwide revival before the coming of the Lord? Question 3. Will the blind church leaders of today and the people of God who blindly follow them who reject what God is raising up and requiring, repentance and reformation, be left behind when the Lord comes for his people. Question 4. Will we reject what God is raising up without even inquiring first what the message is and doctrine that they bring? Surely the people of God will inquire whether this is indeed true and prayerfully make decisions 
which will have eternal consequences. The foundation is important. It's given in the second series. Crossing over. Will we cross over the Jordan into the promised land? Billy Graham likened to Moses has now died and the time is now. Many in the church will reject the call and the way to cross over, which is the apostolic foundation, and will die in the wilderness. Moses looking across. One of the more poignant tributes came from his daughter Anne Graham, Lotz, who explained the date of her father's passing, February 21st, held spiritual significance that was strategic from heaven's point of view. That was the day she explained that the Jews were focused on reading scripture but how Moses led the people of Israel out of bondage, much as her father had led millions of people out of, the, of bondage to sin. When does revival break out? Five prophetic markers. Azusa Street, 1906. Reverend William Seymour, the leader of the 1906 Azusa Street Awakening, also prophesied that in roughly 100 years there would be an outpouring of God's Spirit and His Shekinah glory that would be greater and more far-reaching than what was experienced at Azusa. This is the general time. Texas Floods more specifically, this outpouring can only occur once the great shaking of Haggai begins. And according to many prophecies, the great shaking began last year, 2017, with the floods in Texas. So we are only now in the time of the latter rain. There have also been many heavenly signs which confirm this as well. One of these prophecies is given here. Exactly eight years ago, on August 30th, 2009, Brother Billy Nelson had a prophetic dream in which he saw great destruction in Houston, Texas, which he describes as follows. I looked out over the water and saw massive amounts of debris coming out, coming into the waterway. I saw pieces of rooftops, houses, and all manner of trash floating in the water. It was the leading edge of incredible amounts of fragments of what used to be homes and businesses. I didn't understand where all this debris could possibly be coming from and what could cause such a mega disaster. The cruise ship certainly would not escape being trapped in the rubble and the debris was so thick I, I knew I could walk on top of it all the way back to Houston. I heard his voice say, when you see this, it has begun. What has begun? Billy understood it was a confirmation of many other prophetic warnings that God had already given him regarding judgment coming to the United States. He wrote, I believe this dream goes along with what the Father has been saying to me about more and more intense judgments are coming to America. His description of the judgments as more and more intense confirms what Jesus said would happen in the days prior to his return. He described it as being like birth pangs because the pain gets greater and more frequent as the time of delivery draws near. He said the first judgment is the hurricanes that are hitting the coast now. The second judgment will be the earthquakes that will strike both coasts. The third judgment is a massive, massive tidal wave that will hit the east coast and drive water all the way to the mountains. The fourth judgment is so terrible that he would not tell me what it was going to be. Each judgment follows the first in rapid succession and with increasing intensity. Billy Graham's death. The three prophecies concerning the releasing of the hidden wilderness apostles and prophets after Billy Graham's death. Southern Tip African prophecies. 
the southern tip of Africa fire prophecy. The fire will originate from the southern tip of Africa. The fire will spread north through Africa and the fire will spread from Africa to the rest of the world. Many ministers from many continents over a long period of time have had this prophetic word for Africa. The prophecy given by Prophet Sadhu Sundar Selvaraj of India focuses on a region which is part of God's great end time plans. It speaks of a visitation of God in West, um, that's gone in Nigeria, Central and East Africa, Kenya and as far as South as I hear. Of note, this is where um, the ministries of Revival Central is very active at this time. We have our global mission director in Accra, Ghana, and he's just uh, flown through to Kenya, where he's establishing a work there in Kenya. And there's a great work that's suddenly sprung up, not only in this region in Central Africa, but it's also in India and many other parts of the world. But this band, this part of Africa seems to be where God's visiting his people, according to the prophetic word of Prophet Sadhu Sanda Selvaraj. And that is happening right now. Australia prophecies. There have also been several prophecies about end time revival breaking out from Australia to New Zealand, the United Kingdom and beyond. In the year 1927, exactly 90 years ago today, a great man of God named Smith Wigglesworth came to Sydney. During this ministry in Sydney, these were the, this was the word that the Lord spoke through him and he prophesied these words. Australia, you have been chosen by God for a great move of the Holy Spirit. This move of God will be the greatest move of God ever known in mankind's history. It will start a great revival in Australia, spread throughout the whole world and usher in the second coming of Jesus. This will be the, fi the final revival before the coming of the Lord. Whether worldwide, whether it has already started in Africa or whether the greater move will begin in Australia. Let us not debate. Let us agree that it is a worldwide revival and the time is now. Marketplace some prophecies indicate that the end time revival will be a marketplace revival rather than a church revival. God has also raised up hidden apostles and prophets from the wilderness to lead. The very fact that he raises up apostles implies some structure. However, the apostles' chief function is to bring forth the apostolic foundation rather than structure. A new thing. Most of the revivalists of the past were evangelists. In this final move of God, the prophetic words indicate that hidden from the wilderness, apostles and prophets will spearhead this revival. Caution. Many will stir themselves up in the last days. Some will do things according to the flesh. There is true revival and false revival. Stay close to Jesus being established in the apostolic foundation to correctly discern and to keep from error. Next, in the next series, the key to crossing over. What is the apostolic foundation? The revelation from the wilderness.